In this lecture, we are going to test our HTTP request and responder. Before we jump into this video, go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited membership and get access to all of the courses we've ever created. That's over 2,000 hours of content. So we'll test the API by sending an HTTP post request and we should be able to get the response from the server that they were able to post a new entry to our database. We're going to be testing this out with curl in the terminal and we're going to show how to do this on Mac and Windows because it's slightly different on the two OS's. If you don't want to use the terminal but for those services you do have to create a free account so instead we're going to be showing how to do it all from the terminal so here i have my server running my web server i also have my mongo daemon running because i'm going to be interacting with my database to check that i was able to add a new entry in there next i'm going to hit plus here to open up a new terminal window so open a new instance of your terminal or command prompt. Let's start with showing how to perform an HTTP POST request on Mac with sending JSON data. Because sending JSON data is different from sending your body of your request via a URL. All right, so here I'm going to use curl and then specify my header type with dash H specifying that what's coming next is content that I want to add in my header. In my header I want to specify my content type because we are going to be sending JSON data so that content type is application slash slash JSON. Next we pass in dash D to specify that we're going to put data in next. We'll use a single quote because JSON uses double quotes. So the single quote is to contain all of our JSON data. We're going to send one JSON object, which is stored in curly brackets. Then each property and value must be in double quotation marks. So first we have our username property. Let's just make sure we spell that right. We have a colon to separate the property and the value. So the username, and then we have mammoth interactive. This is just a value that I'm giving my username. Then you have a comma to separate all of the properties in your object. So we have our first property username with the value a mammoth interactive. Then let's put in our second property first name. Again, the property and the value both have to be in double quotation marks because we're sending JSON data. Let's give a first name like John. Again, the property and the value are separated with a colon. Then we have a comma to separate each of the properties. Our last property was email. So let's put in an email here, mammothinteractive at test.com. Next, we have to close the object with a closing curly bracket, and we have to close the entire JSON data with a single quote. So you have to use different quotes for the enclosing versus the JSON data if you're on Mac. We'll talk about Windows in a moment. All right, so that's our data. Then we have to specify the type of request. Now, if you actually pass in data, the type of request is implied to be a post request, but you can specify the data type with dash x post. Because we specified dash data, the default actually immediately switches from get to post, so we don't even have to add that. But this is a post type, and we could use a different type like patch or delete. All right, next we have to specify the route. So that is going to be in double quotes. It's the URL that is handling a post request for users. In our case, that is HTTP localhost at port 3000 slash users. You can hit enter and you should get your data as a response because that's what we set up our server to send as a response. So we see all the data part of the object the username, the first name, the email, and also a randomly generated ID as a unique identifier. So this tells me we were able to add the entry to our database on Mac. And if you're getting an error message here, make sure you have your quotation marks being these 
regular quotation marks, not any smart quotes or formatted quotes that can cause issues. Also, you may want to update your version of curl if you are not getting a successful message here. Read your error message, see what it says. If you struggle with curl, you can also use a website like Postman or Insomnia to send your data. All right, so as long as your server is all set up properly, then you should get this response of the data because that's what we set up on the server side. And we can actually test out that we were able to successfully add an entry to our database. So for that, I'm going to open a new terminal window and I'm going to launch my Mongosh shell. You can also use Mongo as an alternative. Then I'm going to use my database that we created called the REST database. So now I'm inside of the REST database. Then I can go into my users collection and I can use the find function. This will return for me all of the entries in my collection. So I can see I had my original entry and then we have this entry that we just added. So this tells me that we were able to add an entry to the database via a post request. Now if you are on Windows it's going to be slightly different to perform a curl post request or any kind of request where you send JSON data. So if you are on Windows, here's what you do. You type in curl, then you specify the headers again. Content type is application slash JSON. Now, if you're actually on Windows, you have to use double quotes, okay? So Windows doesn't allow single quotes unless you have a special type of shell. So you have to actually use double quotes if you are on Windows. And next we specify the data and we have to use double quotes because we're on Windows if you are. Now here's where the tricky part comes in. So because you have to use double quotes on Windows, but you have to also use double quotes on JSON, this causes a conflict because you can't have double quotes inside of double quotes. This would just exit out of the data. So instead, if you're on Windows, you actually have to backslash out of every single double quote in your JSON data only. So that way it's not treated as a, the curl command, it's just treated as part of the JSON. And that way the double quote will be treated as JSON data, not as part of the curl command. And don't worry, the backslash will get removed when the data is actually sent. Okay, so here then we pass in the username and we have to backslash out of every double quote. So you can use an auto replacer to automatically replace all of the double quotes in your JSON data with a backslash and then a double quote. So here we had our username and the value of that was Mammoth Interactive. Then we need to double quote, but we have to backslash out of it. We then had a comma and we had our next property was the first name. So we have to backslash out of the double quote that is opening and closing. Then we had the value of first name, which was John. We have to backslash out of all those double quotes. Next, same thing with email. We have to backslash out of that and out of each of the double quotes. And we can put in our email, mammothinteractive at test.com. We have to backslash out of the double quote. Then we can close the object and then put in a regular double quote because that is actually now part of the curl command. So we don't want to backslash out of that. We only want to backslash out of the, the double quotes inside of the JSON object. Then we specify our route, which is here, HTTP localhost 3000 slash users. So if you're on Windows, you have to use double quotes. If you're on Mac, you can use single or double quotes. And the same with Linux. Thanks for watching and don't forget to go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited membership where you can get access to over 350 courses that we've created.